Hello, welcome. Pause the video, read the problem, and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. Okay, let's read this problem. It says that the result of a survey of the student body at Central High School about television viewing preferences are shown below. All right, so what do we have here? We have male and female preferences on this side, and then the type of television view on this side. We've got comedy, drama, reality, and then there's a margin here, a total as well as down here, these are our marginal frequencies in these margins of the table. Right, so I'm just going to highlight that. Sometimes the language there of saying a marginal frequency can be really useful. Okay, so I'm just highlighting this. It's taking me forever. All right, getting there, getting there. Okay, if the event student is a male, and are the event, excuse me, student is a male and student prefers reality series independent of each other. All right, so let's call this event A the event where a student is a male. And how often does that happen? Well, if we look down here to our marginal frequency, we get 230. Okay, so the event student is a male, A, has a probability. The probability that a student is a male, I'll use A for that, I'm calling this event A. You can call it M for male if you want, is 230. There are 230 males out of the total, that's this marginal frequency right here, 490. Okay, let's just go to the next one. Student prefers reality series. Let's call this this B. So where are the reality series? They're in this column right here. And if I look down the column to the very bottom to the marginal frequency of, of 180 here at the bottom, that 180 tells me the total number of people who prefer uh, reality series. So let's write that down. So the probability that a person likes a reality series is 180 out of 490. Okay, so so what do we do with all this information? We want to know, are these two events independent? Well, the probability of B happening, which is this event right here, the, the event of uh, a student, probably that a student prefers a reality series, equals the probability that a student prefers a reality series given that they are a male. This is a fundamental definition of independence. If these two things are equal, then A and B are independent. And maybe an intuitive way to talk about it, to, to think about what given means, like B given A, that's just saying that, okay, what's the probability of B if you know A has happened first? Now, if that is the same as just the probability of B happening, whether A happened first or not, then A and B have no impact on each other. They're independent. So the idea is if A has no impact on B, they must be independent. So is this true? Is the probability of B equal to the probability of B given that A has happened? Well, we can figure that out. In these, these, these two-way frequency tables or these contingency tables, what we can do is we can say, all right, what is the probability of B happening given that A has happened? Well, what's the probability that a student prefers a reality series given that you know they're a male? So we find the row for males. That's this row right here. And in that row, the, um, out of all of the males, 70 of them prefer a reality series. And it's out of all the males, 230. So if you know they're a male, given that they're a male, that's happened first, all right, there are 230 males. And then out of that 230, there are 70 that prefer a reality series. That's this probability right here. So that would be 70 out of 230. Now, does that equal? the probability of B, which is 180 over 490? And the answer is no, and we can test that really quickly. If you had a calculator out, you could just pull my calculator up. You can just say, okay, well, what's 70 divided by 230? Okay, that's about 0 0.304. And what's 180 divided by 490? It's different, the different number. These are not equal. So here we could say it's not independent. You would write down it's not independent because these two fractions aren't equal. And you would say, say approximately what they equal. Like justify, they want you to justify your answer. So say the probability of B seven, uh, is 180 over 490, which is about 0.37. And the probability of B given A is about 0 0.30. And those numbers are not the same. You could also state that they're only these events A and B are only independent if the probability of B equals the probability of B given A. But just make sure you break these fractions down, 
fractions town to their decimal equivalents. All right, thanks.